بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل فرجهم ولعن اعداءهم اجمعين In the name of Allah, the most gracious and most merciful, may the peace and blessings of Allah the Exalted be upon the Prophet Muhammad and his purified progeny. And may the damnation of Allah be upon the enemies, dear brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We are continuing our discussion with regard to some of the descriptions in the Quran for Allah Azza wa Jal. Of course, Allah, according to Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, is greater than to be described as when he gave the explanation for Allahu Akbar. But we have certain things within the Qur'an which are attributed to Allah Azza wa Jal and we explain these. For example, if we say Baytullah, the house of Allah Azza wa Jal, does it mean that Allah literally lives in this house? No, this is a type of tashrifiyah, this is a type of honouring for Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal has this thing to display his honor and greatness to the believers and he attributes it to himself in order to show the believers that this is a holy place and this place is a signification of his greatness. So when I say the bait or the house of a certain person, it means his house, you get the image that he lives in there, he eats, sleeps, rests in his house and does whatever he needs to do in his house. Whereas when it comes to Allah Azza wa Jal, we understand this in a different way. So, in the last episodes we discussed about the shin of Allah Azza wa Jal. Does Allah have a shin? What does it mean in the Qur'an when it says the shin will be laid bare? And we showed the Shia opinion as well as the opinion of the Salafiyya. For these episodes, we will discuss the Arsh, the throne of Allah, and the Kursi, the Arsh and the Kursi. Now just to say, dear brothers and sisters, this topic is actually quite a complicated one because there are so many narrations. Uh, which mention the throne and um, also the kursi, but more the throne. And one might become confused when they read these narrations to come to a certain conclusion. And I remember I told uh, one sheikh I know in Najaf that I'm going to be dealing with this topic. And he says, you always like to go for the difficult topics. But of course, it's beneficial for myself and for the viewers. And one can research further on the points that I make. So we want to um, discuss this matter about the Arsh and Kursi and of course we're going to try and do it in episodes maybe less than 20 minutes because unfortunately we live in a TikTok generation meaning that people have one minute attention spans and it's even hard for them to watch you know um, five minute ten minute clips let alone sometimes 20 minute clips so we want to try to keep the videos you know to let's say 15 20 minutes and divide these so it will be easier for people to watch but of course if anyone wants to gain True knowledge, they cannot do this through one minute clips. People have to make, um, you know, effort to do this. Some people have to sit in the lectures of the ulama, the scholars for hours in order to fully benefit or refer back to these and study them in parts. So the Arsh, the throne, is mentioned many times within the Quran. Over 18 times we find the mention of the Arsh. And sometimes it's mentioned in different contexts. Now Arsh, the first thing that would come to someone's mind is a type of throne that someone sits on because linguistically um, it means throne. The arsh is a throne, a type of seat or some say a bed that someone would rest on. This is the first image that one gets. And then we also have the term kursi which is mentioned one time within the Quran in the well-known ayatul kursi which many of you recite for protection and many of you have memorized. So, وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Many people have memorized Ayatul Kursi and they know this. So the Kursi is mentioned once in the Quran in this particular verse. So what is the meaning of the Arsh, the throne, and the Kursi which some translate as chair? Is there a difference between both of these? Is one greater than the other? Are these metaphorical? Are these something which, you know, is a physical creation of Allah Azza wa Jal? We will aim to answer all of these questions throughout the next episodes, inshallah ta'ala. But before we do that, we need to show what the 
um, sect that refers to itself as Ahl Sunnah say, or as some call them the Bakriya, the Omariya. What do they say about the Arsh of Allah Azza wa Jal? So one of the most well-known verses being Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa that Allah established himself on the throne. Let's see the following clip. Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa استوى الاستواء معلوم أنت تريد أن تقول استولى كما يقول أهل الضلال لا 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 أنا لم أقول ذلك أنا آه آه ما معنى استوى الاستواء معلوم الرحمن على العرش استوى الاستواء معلوم أنا أجل وفسر فسرها بعض أهل العلم بالجلوس على الكرسي نعم فسرها بعض العلماء بالجلوس على الكرسي فسرها بعض العلماء بذلك معنى ذلك أن الله سبحانه وتعالى جسر أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم So welcome back dear brothers and sisters As we have seen in this clip The Salafi says it's ma'loom And I believe this term is from some of their Sahaba or Tabi'een that they follow But he says that it's clear what istawa means, to establish yourself or mount a certain thing. And he goes as far as to say that the ulama of the sect who refers to itself as Ahl Sunnah or the Salafi say it is sitting. So Allah Azza wa is literally sitting on a throne according to their beliefs. And again, they come with this principle. They say, oh, you know, we affirm uh, what Allah has affirmed for himself. And yes, Allah is sitting, but we don't know how. He has a foot, he has a face. Because of course, in one of the last episodes, they might try to take the clip and say, oh, well, the Quran says that. You're saying we give Allah human attributes. Why did Allah use this language? And this is because they are jahil when it comes to understanding many of the um, phrases in Arabic, although they claim to be uh, experts in this. Or they will admit, as we said, Bin Baz said, for example, the shin does being revealed does indicate a serious matter, but they take the narrations that have the tajseem and actually give a literal attribute to Allah Azza wa Jal as having a shin that will be seen or hands, etc. So he admits that Allah Azza wa Jal is literally sitting down as according to some of the ulama as seen as in the clip. And this is because, dear brothers and sisters, again, they are mujassima. The Shia are the people of Tawheed that believe in the true oneness of Allah Azza wa Jal. Yet day and night the Salafiyah say, you are mushrikeen, you are kuffar, but this is their beliefs. I mean, it's not hard to unpackage these beliefs. All one has to do in this, who would ever become a Salafi after seeing these things? Yes, of course, in other episodes I've mentioned ghulu because we have to clear that filth um, from the Shia community of people claiming that they are Shia, but they are ghulat. But at the same time, look, when you go down to the mat of Tawheed, don't even go to the mat of istighafa tawassal, just go down to the very basis of Tawheed. And you can see that this is, this is nothing like, who is gonna follow this? You know, to have some limited sky god with human parts. And then you have problems with the Christians when they say that Isa alayhi salam, uh, God came in a man. Because you say, okay, God doesn't have body parts, etc. He's not seen. But you guys are doing the same thing. So basically, if Allah Azza wa Jal is sitting and is carried on the throne, it means that he is among material things. And it means that he is in a body and has weight and is limited. Because as we know, they literally believe Allah Azza wa Jal is in the sky above the creation. They give him a direction and they say he is within this space. You might also hear them say that Allah Azza wa Jal is carried, his throne is carried by the angels and that due to this heaviness, you know, they go down and the throne makes a creaking sound. So Allah Azza wa Jal, according to some of them, is literally sitting. He's on this arsh. And then again, it makes sounds and creaks, as we'll see in the following clip. كما لو جلس أحدكم على كرسي أو على سرير سمع له صوت وهو جديد وهذا يدل على ثقله سبحانه وتعالى وأنه أعظم من كل عظيم. So as you saw, he said this is due to Allah Azza wa Jal's heaviness. So again, Allah Azza wa Jal is sitting, 
and because of this heaviness, the chair, it creaks. For example, a human, let's say per someone is very heavy or they move back and forth in their chair, usually they'll hear a sound because this relates to the heaviness of their body and the limitation and material of the chair. Yet according to many of those who refer to themselves as Ahl Sunnah or in particular the Salafiyyah, Allah Azza wa Jal sits on this throne, the Arsh, as mentioned in the Quran. They interpret this as Allah Azza wa Jal literally sitting on a throne and then it creaking. So we say that this is very problematic due to the following reasons. We acknowledge the verse that Allah Azza wa Jal established himself on the throne, but we do not take this literally. If we take the literal interpretation of the Salafiyya, then it brings the following issues. So if one is to be carried, it shows that they are in need and it shows a type of defect. Why does someone literally sit on a chair or for example, a throne? A human, he will sit down because let's say most humans are unable to squat for that amount. Any person, whoever it is, if he does not have a chair under him to be carried, then eventually he'll collapse. You know, he tries to squat and then eventually he'll clap unless he's a very strong person. But eventually he'll need something to balance him. So we sit on a chair due to us being need and this shows that we are carried. So human is unable to sit down without something carrying him. So being carried indicates that one is in need. But they don't just go as far as this as saying that, okay, Allah literally sits on a throne and you know the throne creaks they also say that the kursi the chair is different from the throne and that allah azza wa jal uses this for his aqdam his feet so this is some of them said the footstool the feet seat and we will show inshallah ta'ala later on some clips of this we'll make a whole episode where we discuss the kursi so this is unfortunately what many of the salafia say so before we go into the meanings of arsh and kursi again let us just see the verses which mention this so chapter 20, verse 5, Ar-Rahman ala al-Arsh istawa. We mentioned this one, that God established himself on the throne. Thumma uh, istawa ala al-Arsh. That 13, chapter 13, verse 2, that then thumma, he established himself on the Arsh. And there are more verses which talk about the Arsh as well. We find again verses, for example, chapter 9, verse 129. And he is the Lord of the great throne. So basically this shows that this throne is something which is great. First we have the verses describing Allah Azza wa Jal that he established himself on the throne and then we have a verse saying that this great throne. So it's something of magnificence which is linked to Allah Azza wa Jal. Chapter 40 verse 7 we find another verse which says those who bear the throne and all those who are around it hymn the praises or sing the praises of their Lord and believe in him. So those who go around or they bear the throne, carry the throne, sorry, those who carry the throne, and those around it that they sing the praise of their Lord or they say the praise of their Lord and believe in him. So this verse again, it would some would say, okay, maybe it indicates a type of uh, carrying of the throne, a physicality of the throne. We have another verse, chapter 11, verse 7, where it says, هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامِ وَكَانَ عَرْشُهُ عَلَى الْمَاءِ That Allah, it is He who created the heavens and the earth in six days, and His throne was upon water. So again, someone reading this might say that, okay, what does it mean? water something physical and it says the throne was on top of it. Is this metaphorical? Is this physical? We'll go into this inshallah ta'ala. And we have another verse. وَالْمَلَكُ عَلَىٰ عَرْجَائِهَا وَيَحْمِلُ عَرْشَ رَبِّكَ فَوْقَهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ ثَمَانِيَةٍ And the angels will be on the sides thereof and eight will uphold the throne of thy Lord that day above them. So from these verses I've read, we'll just go through a um, quick few points of things which have probably come to your mind. So power and a place, someone sits physically. So you might be thinking Arsh can mean power, but normally a place that someone sits physically. The Arsh being something great, so the throne being something great, because of Rabbul Arsh al-Azim, and angels circulating it. 
A third meaning is that, okay, it's carried, which indicates physicality, something that is a physical throne. And the fourth meaning, being on water, for example, that كان عرشه وكان عرشه على الماء, that again, ما, water is something physical, yet the, the throne is being carried on this or floating on this. Someone might think, okay, this is a type of uh, physical arsh. So these are the types of meanings that might come to one's mind, perhaps metaphorical, perhaps physical, which inshallah ta'ala we will discuss. And one important point to mention, dear brothers and sisters, is that even though it says arsh in various verses, not each verse has to have the same meaning. Arsh can be used and indicate various things. This is something that we'll come to. And there, there will be a difference of opinion when it comes to meanings. So some say that, okay, how do we not know exactly what the Arsh is? Um, shouldn't this be something straightforward that we know why is there different opinions? You know, is religion meant to be complicated like this? What we can say is, look, our, li- our knowledge, our ilm is limited in this life, dear brothers and sisters. As Muslims, we regard ourselves as being people who believe in the knowledge of the unseen. So we admit that the knowledge that we have may be a drop in the ocean or even a grain in a big sand desert because there is much knowledge which is only known to Allah Azza wa Jal or known to those who are close to him, his awliya, his prophets, the imams alayhim as So for us to try to decipher the meaning of these verses, it's pondering upon these verses. And even if we do not get the exact meaning or there comes some different meanings, this is just an indication to us and perhaps inshallah ta'ala, when we die, many of these things will be revealed to us or in Jannah inshallah ta'ala, all of us reach Jannah, we will know these things. So Arsh, the throne, is mentioned in various verses and different meanings come up. So what inshallah ta'ala I will do is just give a summary of the meanings of what Arsh is. For all of those people, for example, let's say they've unfortunately got a short attention span or you know the TikTok attention span where they don't want to watch a clip more than a few minutes, we will summarize it. But those who want, truly want knowledge, watch the further episodes and inshallah ta'ala we will go through these meanings in depth and see some of the ahadith related to what the Arsh is. So just quickly before we finish off, I'll give a summary of the meanings according to the Shia ulama. So the Shia scholars give different meanings for the throne, the Arsh of Allah Azza wa Jal, and I'll summarize these and go deeper in the other episodes. So firstly, some say that the Arsh is a physical type of creation. So remember we said that the house of Allah, Baytullah, indicates that this is a place attributed to Allah Azza wa Jal, which is a place of greatness and also uh, points towards the greatness of Allah Azza wa Jal, like the house of Allah, like the Kaaba. So some say that the Arsh is a physical type of thing, not that Allah Azza wa Jal is literally sitting on it, but it's a great type of creation and it contains all things where the commandments and the prohibitions emanate from. So the Arsh is a great type of creation to show the greatness of Allah Azza wa Jal. And of course, Allah is all great and powerful and he creates these signs so that we can understand his greatness. So firstly, some say that the Arsh, the throne, has the physical meaning. Secondly, the type of metaphorical meaning that some go towards. So they say this indicates rulership and his sovereignty over everything, which goes back to power. And we will show examples of this, how when one says, for example, they have taken the throne, it indicates a type of power over everything, of sovereignty of their kingdom. Uh, the third meaning is knowledge. So some say that knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal that he gave to some of creation, this is what the throne means, the Arsh means, and we will speak about this in narrations. So three meanings here, some of the Shia ulama, when they discuss the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal, the Arsh, they don't say it's Allah physically sitting down and the throne creaking like the Salafis say, Rather, one of the meanings is a physical creation, something great attributed to Allah Azza wa Jal, like the house of Allah in Mecca, the Kaaba. The second meaning is the meaning of having sovereignty control over all of the creation. Uh, the third meaning is knowledge. So the Arsh is knowledge which Allah Azza wa Jal gave to some of his creation. About the Kursi again, there's a difference of opinion on the Kursi and we will go in depth into this inshallah ta'ala, but I'll give the summarized meaning. The Kursi can refer to his dominion and kingdom, the kingdom of Allah Azza wa Jal, that is one interpretation. The Kursi can be the knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal according to some of the narrations. And the third 
opinion is that the Kursi, just like the Arsh, is a physical type of creation, which is um, encompassed within the Arsh. So you have the Arsh, which is a physical type of creation, and it contains all of the universe and creation. And within this is also the Kursi, which is another great physical type of creation, which everything else is within. So we will elaborate on these meanings, inshallah ta'ala, but that is just to give the dear brothers and sisters a summary as to what the meanings of Arsh and Kursi is when discussed by the Shia scholars. And of course, this is derived from the narrations. So inshallah ta'ala, join us in the next episode where we'll go deeper into this matter and we will start talking about where we can find narrations in the Shia literature which relate to the throne, the Arsh and the Kursi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum wal'an adahum.